And now, here comes a Bentley, the Continental GT, which is based on the same architecture as the latest Porsche Panamera. I suspect that having somebody of Durheimer's influence around has been quite useful during this car's gestation. The latest Continental GT is, as before, a 2 plus 2. And it's nearly ready. Nearly enough that this story could almost have appeared in this magazine's first drive section. But, four months from full production, there are still some things, software and trim finishing, rather than any hardware, which is all signed off, that still need changing, so here we are, in the features section, testing an almost ready Continental, Bentley's W12 powered pound 150k inch luxury coupe. It helps the luxury thing, of course, if you put an engine that has a natural balance to it beneath the bonnet, such as one with 12 cylinders. I say that, mind because it's true that cars with multiples of six inline cylinders have perfectly balanced primary and secondary moments, so they don't really vibrate. Bentley's W12, newly developed for the Bentley and with more than 80 components changed again here, mostly because they don't need it to go off-road, isn't so inherently balanced but is incredibly compact because it's effectively arranged like two V6s around a common crankshaft. So it's very short end coupled with the fact that the front axle line is pulled forwards over its predecessor by 135mm, it gives a rather better weight distribution, of 55-45 front to rear, rather than closer to 60-40 last time out. Bentley says it's the most advanced 12-cylinder on the planet. Six cylinders shut down under light loads and it has two turbochargers, but it's the injection where it's cleverest. Old-fashioned port injection is apparently good for giving a car a relaxed, refined idle and low rev mooching, whereas high loads and throttle openings suit these newfangled direct injection methods. So they've given the 6.0 liter W12 both, L both.